Good morning. Welcome to worship at Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. I am so glad you are here this morning. This is a community where all are welcome, no matter your age, your ethnicity, your economic situation, or marital status, your disability or difference, your sexual orientation or gender identity, no matter what, you are welcome here. A couple of notes I want to share about our life together. One is we, have, um, we are spoiled with uh, a richness of musical talent today from the congregation. Jen and Judy will be leading us on handbells. Linda's playing in Alice's absence, and Molly will be sharing on the viola. So I, uh, I love that. Next Sunday is Youth Sunday, so you want to make sure to be here. The youth craft the whole service from beginning to end, and it's always one of the highlights of the year. After worship today, we have a lunch that everyone is invited to. It is a uh, lunch and learn. We'll have Filipino dishes prepared by folks who will be traveling on behalf of our church to the Philippines next month. And we'll be joined by a leading researcher from Virginia Tech who will be teaching us about how indigenous communities around the world have adapted their food systems to climate change. I think that will be fascinating. So please join us after worship for lunch. Now come, friends, let us worship. Please rise in body or in spirit as we begin to worship. Grace and peace be with you, and also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Light breaks forth like the dawn, scattering the darkness and renewing our hope. The God of love is our joy and our life the wellspring of our praise, the font of all our alleluias. Alleluia, amen.
Let us say the prayer of confession together. God of love, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are prisoners of ourselves. By grace, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. As forgiven people, we are set at peace with ourselves, with each other, with our God. And so we greet one another with a sign of that peace. And as we do so, I invite children to come forward. The peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. Good morning. How was everyone's Easter spring break? Good. Good. Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, have you heard the word contagious? How have you heard the word contagious used before? How have you heard it? How have you heard it? How have you used the word contagious? Mm. Have you ever heard you can't go to school today because you're contagious? You can't go to a birthday party today because you're contagious. Yeah. Germs. Yeah. It can mean sick. Have you ever heard that yawns are contagious? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, what about good things being contagious? Have you ever heard someone's laughter is contagious? Or their smile? Or happiness? Or maybe the Alleluia bells at Easter were contagious? Yeah, yep, still got one. So um, from today's, so contagious means to spread. You have shoes, yes, you do. Um, contagious means to spread or to share or to pass it on. Uh, so sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not as good. Uh, from today's scripture, we're talking about passing on joy. Okay, so joy for the dictionary, is a feeling of great happiness. What brings you great happiness or great joy? Was there something in your Easter basket, maybe? Yes. Hot dogs and hamburgers. Hot dogs and hamburgers. All right. <clears throat> Matthew? A, moon ball. a what? Moon ball. A moon ball. That sounds fun. Yes. Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Okay. Gymnastics. Gymnastics. That makes you happy, too? Yeah. Candy. Candy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Playing with your friends. 
You got candy? Yeah, candy brings a lot of joy. Um, yes. Oh, getting to watch your favorite shows or favorite games on TV, that's, that's good joy too, yeah. Yeah, can I see your joyful face? Yeah, big smiles. Okay, so as Christians, joy is a pretty important word for us. We celebrate it as one of our Advent candles, right? That was one of our candles. I think it's the pink one. Is that right? Okay, it was the pink one, the sole pink one. Um, and we also sing about it, Joy to the World. Everybody know that song? And we're going to sing a song today that has a, a verse in it that says, I've got joy like a fountain. Can you show me what a fountain does? Big arms, right? Joy like a fountain. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so if you've ever seen a fountain, they're continuous and powerful and large. You can see them from far away. And sometimes they're coordinated with dance and lights and, and have, have music with them too. So they're pretty cool. So joy is believing in God and believing that he is working in our lives no matter what. Yeah, it does click with it. And joy is God's love and the good news of Easter and the risen Christ. And God doesn't want us to keep that joy to ourselves. He uh, wants us to share that joy with others, and it should be contagious, right? It should be contagious in the spreading of the joy because when we share our joy, it's doubled. So that's pretty, pretty good news for a Sunday morning. Do you guys want to pray with me? Read after me? All right. Dear God... Thank you for joy. Thank you for joy. And for our friends, family, and neighbors. And for our friends, family, and neighbors. Who we can share joy with. Who we can share joy with. Amen. Light of our lives, light of our hearts, open our eyes to your presence with us this morning and always. Alleluia. Amen. Over the winter, we read the story of Jesus week by week from the Gospel of John. And today, we're going to shift into the letter of First John. It came from the same community a little bit later, and um, it works out the theology of what do these stories about Jesus mean for how we live our daily lives they come to the conclusion that God is love. God is love. That's in chapter 4, so we'll get to it in a few weeks. Today we're going to start at the beginning. From John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. We announce to you what existed from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes and our hands handled about the word of life. That life was revealed and we have seen and we testify and announce to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also announce it to you so that you can have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so our joy can be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light. There is no darkness in God at all. If we claim we have fellowship with him and live in the darkness, we are lying and do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way as he is in the light, we do 
have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. If we claim we have never sinned, we make God a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you don't sin. But if you do sin, We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is God's way of dealing with our sins, not only ours, but the sins of the whole world. For the spirit of wisdom in Scripture, for the spirit of wisdom among us, for the spirit of wisdom within us, Thanks be to God. This little letter, just a few chapters long, packs a lot into every single verse. If that was hard to follow, you're not alone in that. We could probably spend a week on each verse, but we are not going to do that. Let's start Sort of in the middle, verse 4, why they're writing. So that their joy will be complete. In some way, their joy won't be complete, won't be full, if they don't share it. They're not writing this to convince or persuade, or cajole, or evangelize, or convert. They're writing it for the joy of it. I have a friend who has a four-year-old, and she was telling me the other day about telling her four-year-old the story of Easter this year, the weekend before Easter. And she felt like for the first time, Her four-year-old really got it. And as she wrapped up the story, her kiddo said to her, Mom, do you have a phone? Yes, she said, not quite sure where this was going. And her four-year-old said to her, We have to call people and tell them. I also love that the first person she wanted to call was a 70-year-old neighbor who goes to church every week. (laughs) That's the spirit of joy that I hear in this letter. With all its highfalutin language, it's about joy. And look at what they want to announce. What we have heard what we have seen, what we have handled with our hands. In other words, all the theology that's going to follow from here and all the fancy words aren't just theory or logic or philosophy reasoned out. It all comes from actual experiences they have had. And the conclusion they end up drawing from their experiences is that God is love. They have come to believe that our deepest calling, the goal of our lives, is to wake up to that love, and live within it. 
live by that light every moment of every day. Which, if you have tried that for even 10 minutes, you have probably found it is hard to do. Some judgmental thought tends to float through my head, or some gossip comes out of my mouth. I hurt someone unintentionally. It's hard. And I think that's why this letter goes immediately from experiences of God to sin and fault, shortcoming. Love sounds great, but when it's lived out, mistakes are made. Feelings get hurt. And I think it's important to know this letter was not written by one guy shut up in a quiet room somewhere. This letter shifts back and forth between we and I. It was written by a community. One person probably wrote it down, but this came out of a community. And so they know how hard it is to get along all the time. How hard it is to really love folks. The only really problematic folks are the ones who don't think they're ever wrong, who it's never their fault. They have concluded everyone messes up. And everyone, the whole world, is forgiven. And they trust that, not because it's some abstract idea that someone told them, but because they have experienced that forgiving, gracious love. They don't tell us what those experiences are, just that they've had them. You may remember the Gospel of John was probably written about 70 years after Jesus died. And this letter is from a little later than that. So these followers are just like us in the sense that they weren't there when the historical person of Jesus walked the earth. And yet they claim to have had experiences that they have seen and heard with their ears and handled, touched with their hands, that have revealed to them the light and love that is God. Take a minute and think, what have been your experiences of love, light, joy, forgiveness? Maybe a moment of profound connection with someone you love dearly. Maybe sitting at the bedside of someone you love as they died. Maybe standing at the top of a mountain. Maybe being forgiven and reconciled. If we take seriously the idea that Jesus shows us what God is like and that God, as we see God in Jesus, is an abundance, an overflowing of love that can't keep to itself, has to be shared, then those experiences of love 
should be the foundation of our perspective on the world. The foundation of our theology. They're not just pretty moments of distraction from everything else. They're not just sentimental things or vacations from reality. These experiences, like what they had, like what we have, are what's really real. They're the point. And they know sin is also profoundly real. We are all broken in some way. We all hurt others and ourselves, sometimes intentionally, sometimes without even knowing what we've done. Our Calvinist ancestors called it total depravity of all people, which is kind of intense language. But you know, some days when I look around at our world and see what we are capable of doing to one another, I'm not sure it's too strong to call it total depravity. We could also call it, like we did last week, the human propensity to mess things up. Whatever we call it, however we name it, we can't shy away from it. If we try to live in love, we will mess up. That's just part of being human. That's why we have a prayer of confession in our worship almost every single week. It's not to come in here and feel bad about ourselves or feel ashamed. It's just about honesty. Being ourselves before the love that is God. We hurt people, and we need to be honest about that so that we can turn, be forgiven, recommit ourselves to the way of love. We all sin, but, says Genesis, that is not the first word about us. The first word God spoke about us was good. Along with all of creation, very good. And this community, in their experiences of Jesus presence which revealed to them God's love have come to believe that it will not be the last word about us either. Love will. That is the good news. That is what we're called to share, to live in, just for the joy of it. Amen.
You may be seated. It is out of that joy, that love, that we give. Not out of guilt or shame or obligation, but out of love. We give our time, our attention, our resources for God's work of love in the world. So let us give thanks for all we've been given and all that is ours to give.
thank you for these gifts, oh God. Thank you for the ability to give them. Thank you for your work of love in the world to which they will contribute. Amen. may be seated. Friends, this is God's table. It's not yours or mine. It's not Blacksburg Presbyterian Church's table. It's Christ's. And so you are welcome, no matter what. If you are hungry, you are welcome. Would you pray with me? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Love most mighty, love most merciful. We are so grateful. We are grateful for the ways you manifest in all creation, in the red buds and dogwoods and tulips, the joy of the earth that cannot be contained. We're grateful for the ways you've stayed steadfast through all our history, especially when we've been lost, wandering far from home. Most of all, we're grateful for what we've seen and experienced in Jesus. A love so vast, we scarce can take it in. 
a love that opens wide its arms, enduring beyond death, bringing new life to us in this weary world. Be with us now as we celebrate this feast of your love. Send your spirit on these gifts of the earth, bread and cup, that they may be for us your very love, alive in us. We pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus sat at table with his friends the ones who would betray and abandon and deny him in just a few short hours. He loved them. Having loved them, he loved them to the end. And so as he sat there, he took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he poured it out. Saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, for the forgiveness of sins. Friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. Bright, amazing God, you come into our lives in ordinary ways, ordinary elements, and reveal to us a grace beyond our imagining. Send us out as bearers of that grace. Make us restless until all are fed. We pray this in your name and your love. Amen. If you're hungry, I hope you'll stay for lunch. The smells are delicious. And as you go, whether you go to lunch here or somewhere else, may you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the unending love of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, this day unto your life eternal. Amen.